In this video, I'm going to show you how to use sprite masks inside of Unity. And with this, you can make cool little effects like I'm demonstrating here, where you can have multiple sprites, and when you mouse over with an object, you display something hidden revealed behind them. You could also use this for something like making an avatar image of your player in the corner, like a little demonstration here, where you can take the full player image and then just only display the parts that you want to see inside the avatar. So the first thing I want to do is just bring up the Unity reference document on sprite mass, as this gives a great definition of what they are and shows some great examples as well. So right here, sprite masks are used to either hide or reveal parts of a sprite or a group of sprites. The sprite mask only affects the objects using the sprite renderer component. So that's a perfect definition of what it does right there. And if we scroll down, we can see some quick examples here. So you can see this example is using it for like a trading card game where you can take the full image and use a mask to only display this corner to put on your card. For this demonstration, I'm just going to drag in a simple sprite to be our background, and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. Now I'm just going to find another sprite to act like a player and drag that in as well. I'm just going to change his order and layer to one. And if you're not familiar with order and layer, think of it like a stack of paper and the lower numbers are the ones on the bottom and then the higher numbers are the ones on the top. So anything with a higher value, you're going to see on top of the other background. So now we have this player guy here in the scene and I'm just going to go and I'm going to find a sprite for this zombie character. I'm going to drag him in as well. And I'm just going to change the player's order in layer to two and then I'm going to set the zombie to one. So the player's in front of the zombie and the zombie's behind him. And when I move them on top of each other here, you can just kind of see the zombie behind him a bit. Now let's start making our sprite mask. So let's create an empty game object in the scene and I'm just going to call it sprite mask. This example is going to be kind of like a flashlight that reveals hidden objects. So we're going to make it that when you shine it on the player, you see the zombie behind him. Let's reset the transform on this sprite mask object, and then let's add a new component of type sprite mask. The shape of the sprite mask is going to be based on the sprite that you used. So right next to the sprite field, if I click the little arrow, I can select any sprite to use. So in this case, I'm just going to select this knob sprite, which is just a circle. So let's double click on that one. Now our circle is very small, so I'm just going to scale this up and somewhere around 30 should be a decent size. And then if you see, if we move this sprite mask over our, our player sprite, nothing actually happens yet. To set this up, let's go back to our first player sprite. And let's look on his sprite renderer component. And you're going to see this field here that says mask interaction. And by default, it's set to none. So let's set this one to visible outside mask. And what this means is you're going to see this sprite anytime there's no sprite mask over top of it. So you'll notice now we see the zombie because the mask is over the player. If we move it up, now we just see the player. And then if we move it back down, you're going to see the zombie behind him again. And it reveals as you're moving it around. If you look in the scene right now, you can still see both of the characters. You can see the zombie behind him sticking up here. So let's correct that by changing the settings on the zombie now. Select the zombie, and then in his settings, let's change it to be visible inside mask. And now we're only going to see him when the mask is over top of him. Let's move that sprite mask around now. And you see as we move over, now it's replacing the player with the zombie that's hidden behind him. But when the mask isn't on top, you don't see the zombie at all. And if we wanted, we could extend this concept to work with our background as well as the player and the zombie. So I'm just going to drag in another background here. And I'm just going to set its scale to the same as this background. So you can kind of see it behind here, but they're the same size now. Now I'll set it to the same position. And then I'm just going to set its order and layer to negative one. That way it's always behind our main green background here. Now I'm going to select the green tree background here. And I'm going to set this one to be always visible outside of the mask. And now I'm selecting the desert background. And I'm setting this one to visible inside the mask. So now I'm just going to make the sprite mask, the circle here, a bit bigger. And then just start moving it around to see. And now you see you have a whole different background. And then when you move over the player, you see a different person, the zombie. 
So this is almost like a, a portal into a different world or parallel universe or something. Uh, there's a lot of concepts you could do with something like this where you reveal different things behind. So there's two simple uses you can use with sprite masks. Uh, there are many different ways to use them. So I'm just going to show another quick one, kind of like in the Unity document we looked at, where we can make an avatar of our player in the top corner here. So let's give that a shot. I'm just going to drag in this green circle sprite. So this is just in the world, though I'm not doing anything with user interface or UI components right now. And I'm just going to set the sprite to order and layer of somewhere around 5. I'm just picking a random number here and scale it up a bit bigger. This sprite doesn't scale very well, but ignore that. This is just a quick demonstration here. Now I'm going to drag in one of the player sprites and just make him a child of this green circle. And then I'll set his order and layer to be something higher than the circle. Now I'll scale the player up a bit and then move him over to the green circle. And we'll just kind of place him roughly where we want him to be with the right size. Now I'm going to create another empty object and just call this one avatar sprite mask. And then I'll reset its position. Let's add a sprite mask component to this one as well. And then for the sprite, I'm just going to use the knob circle again. And I'll scale this one up a bit bigger again and then just kind of move it over to where we have our avatar in the left corner here and line them up together. And now all we have to do is let's select this character in the avatar and set them to visible inside of mask. And that's it. And now it clipped them off outside of the circle so we only see the face that we want. And now the whole sprite is still there. So you can select them, move them around, scale them up or down, and you're only gonna see what's inside of that circle. I hope this video gave you some ideas of things you can work on and add to your game. So even like this, you could figure out how to add this onto your UI and make it a health bar. Possibilities are pretty much endless with Sprite Mask. There's a lot of cool components and concepts you can come up with. So I hope this helps. Uh, if you come up with anything cool, post it below and I'll check it out. Thanks for watching.